Welcome to this second video on series RLC circuits and this is our second example of a series RLC circuit. If you haven't watched our first video uh, on series RLC I recommend going back to check that out first because this example is a little bit more complicated than the one we saw previously. So here in this example we can see that we have uh, one additional component rather than just having one resistor, one capacitor, one inductor we've got um, a resistor and a capacitor here followed by another resistor and an inductor and the question uh, in, in this particular example is to calculate these two voltages V1 and V2 and these voltages are across uh, pairs of components You'll also notice we're not given the supply voltage in this question. We're told the values of our components and we're also told the value of the frequency of our circuit, but we're not actually told the magnitude of the supply voltage. We are, however, given a supply current, 12 milliamps, and because, again, this is still a series circuit, 12 milliamps is the given current uh, for the whole circuit loop. So. How do we go about calculating V1 and V2? Well, there are a few steps we're going to have to work at in order to get there. First, let's forget about um, the voltages for now. We have two components here that have a reactance. Uh, we have the, the capacitor, which has a reactance XC, and we have an inductor, which has a reactance XL. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate those two reactances. So to begin with, our capacitor has a capacitance of 33 microfarads. And so let's begin by calculating Xc, the reactance of that capacitor. So Xc equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. And we can substitute some values in there. We can say that that's the same as uh, 1 over 2 pi multiplied by our frequency, which we've said is 50 multiplied by our capacitance, which we've said is 33 times 10 to the minus 6. And that gives us a value of 96.46 ohms. Let's do the same for XL. The formula for the reactance of an inductor is 2 pi FL. So again, that's 2 pi times 50 times our inductance, which we said is 560 millihenries, 560 times 10 to the minus 3. And that gives me a reactance of 175.93 ohms. So once again, just like last time, we spoke about the fact that we have two reactances in our circuit, but one of them has a 90 degree phase angle and one of them has a negative 90 degree phase angle. Again, if you need to go back to our previous video to review this, then it's probably worth doing so. But we said that XL, the reactance of an inductor, points upwards in the complex plane and XC, the reactance of a capacitor, points downwards in the complex plane. And so what we can do is we can simplify, rather than having two separate uh, reactances in our circuit, just to start off with, we're going to simplify a little bit by only having one. If this is the case, then we can say that Xt, the total reactance, is equal to Xl minus Xc, the difference between them. And that is the same as saying 175.93 minus 96.46. And subtracting those gives a result of 79.47 ohms. So now that we have the total reactance in our circuit, um, we can calculate the impedance of our whole circuit. Our circuit contains resistances and reactances. And we've already figured out the reactances 
give us a total of 79.47 ohms. We haven't yet looked at our resistances. We have a 270 ohm resistor for R1, and we have a 1K or 1000 ohm resistor for R2. So the total in this case is going to be 1270. Impedance, you'll remember, is not as simple as simply adding the resistances and the reactances. We know that they're both measured in ohms, but we have to calculate them as a complex number. And so the easiest way to do this, just like in our last video, is to use Pythagoras' theorem. We can say that Z squared, the impedance squared, is equal to the total resistance squared plus the total reactance squared. And we know that the total resistance is 1270 plus the total reactance squared, which is 79.47 squared. And that comes out with a, a very big number um, for Z squared, but remembering that that's for Z squared, not Z, we'll take a square root of that number and we come out finally with an answer of 1,272.48 ohms for the impedance of our circuit. Now, our impedance also has a phase angle, and we can calculate that again using trigonometry, the same as in our last video. We can say that phi, the angle of uh, that impedance, is tan to the minus 1 reactance over resistance, or, or total reactance over total resistance. And so that's tan to the minus 1, 79.47 over uh, 1270. And that comes out with an angle of 3.58 degrees. At this point, you might be wondering why we've calculated the impedance of the whole circuit. After all, we're only looking at our components in pairs. We want to find the voltage across this particular pair, and we want to find the voltage across this pair. Well, the reason we've done that is because by calculating the impedance of the whole circuit, we can calculate the current that's going through the whole circuit. And you might see, we already know the current. We're told that it's 12 milliamps. But more than that, we need to know the phase angle of the current. And so calculating the whole impedance and its angle, which we've just done, is going to help us complete the picture a little bit. Let's illustrate this with Ohm's law. So we know that V, um, Vs is our current, I, times our impedance, Z. By substituting some values in, we can say 12 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 is our current, 12 milliamps, multiplied by Z, which we said was 1,272.48. And that's going to give us a value of 15.27 volts for the supply voltage. And at this point, we haven't used any angles in our calculations. We haven't used polar form. But we're actually going to define our supply voltage as the reference phasor. We're going to say that that's at zero degrees. And all our other calculations are going to be with respect to the supply voltage. So now that we've done that, let's rearrange Ohm's law a little bit, and we'll say that our current, I, is the same as V over Z. And we know that the voltage now is 15.27 at an angle of zero. Uh, I'll just put V at an angle of zero. And we know that our impedance was 1,272.48 at an angle of 3.58 degrees. I'll just say Z at an angle of 3.58 degrees. Now the whole V divided by Z part, the 
that we have at the start of our equation, v divided by z here, I'm not particularly bothered about it because I know the answer, it's 12 milliamps. What I'm interested in is what the angle of that current is, and so that's going to be given by uh, subtracting the angles when we're dividing in polar form, so 0 minus 3.58. And so as a result, we know that our, uh, that our supply current is actually equal to 12 milliamps at an angle of minus 3.58. So if I add that to my diagram as well, at an angle of minus 3.58 degrees, we're in a better picture now to be able to calculate these two voltages, V1 and V2. Let's look at how we can do that. So for these final steps, we're again going to use Ohm's law. We're going to say that the voltage V1 to start off with is current multiplied by impedance, whatever impedance it is that we're measuring across. And again, we're going to use complex numbers to do that. The complex numbers that we're going to use are a combination of polar and Cartesian form, or sometimes called rectangular form. And we're going to be converting between the two. If you're not sure about how to convert Cartesian form to polar form, one of our videos covers just that. I suggest going back and checking that out before this final step. Let's move on and try and calculate V1. So like we said, V1 is just Ohm's law. It's going to be I, our supply current, or Is, multiplied by what I'm going to call Z1. And Z1 is whatever impedance I'm measuring across between the two probes of our imaginary sort of voltmeter here. So our impedance um, between these two points. Let's have a look at how we can represent that. Because first of all, we can know um, that our current is 12 times 10 to the minus 3, 12 milliamps. So I'll put 12 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, at an angle of minus 3.58. That was the, the extra bit of information that we found out on the last slide. I'm also going to represent our impedance as a complex number, but in Cartesian form, and that's using J notation. The reason for this is because in Cartesian form, our resistance has um, a sort of horizontal position along the, the x-axis, as it were, of Cartesian form, and reactances occupy the vertical axis, or the imaginary plane, in a complex number. And so we can represent those as real numbers and imaginary numbers uh, using J notation. So our resistance in this particular section, this pair, is 270 ohms, so we can say 270. And our reactance is... Um, a value of 96.46 if you remember from a couple of slides back and so we're going to represent that as a J term because it's on the, the vertical or imaginary plane. We also have to remember that the reactance of a capacitor is pointing downwards in the imaginary plane. It has that minus 90 degree phase angle so we have to represent that as a minus J term. Uh, so we're going to say minus J 96.46 so there's our impedance in Cartesian form. Now, this is a little bit unhelpful as an equation because part of our equation is in polar form and part of our equation is in rectangular form. And so what I'm going to do is convert that Cartesian form into polar form. And when we do that, uh, this first term will stay the same, obviously. So we have 12 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, at an angle of minus 3.58 and now our second term, the impedance, is also in polar form. That comes out as 286.71 at an angle of minus 
0.66 degrees. Now we can calculate our voltage by doing the same as we've done before. We multiply the numerical value um, or the magnitude of our phaser and we add the angles. And so we come out with a result of 3.44 at an angle of minus 23.24 degrees. That's in volts. So that's our first voltage, V1. Let's do exactly the same for V2, which is our voltage here across these two components, our resistor and our inductor. And we'll set this up in exactly the same way with exactly the same method. So that's V2, again using Ohm's law, is IS multiplied by Z2. We know the current is the same current throughout. 12 times 10 to the minus 3 at an angle of minus 3.58 degrees. And in this case, our impedance is going to be, again in Cartesian form, uh, 1000, this time, our resistance, uh, plus J, our, our reactance of an inductor is, is upwards in the imaginary plane and the reactance of that capacitor, uh, the reactance of that inductor, sorry, was 175.93 ohms. So we have our value in Cartesian form there for that impedance. Again, we can't operate with part of our um, formula in, in polar and part in Cartesian or rectangular. So we're going to convert that again. So the first term I'm going to leave alone. 12 times 10 to the minus 3 at an angle of minus 3.58 degrees. But our second term is going to become 1015.36 at an angle of 9.98 degrees. And so finally, we can multiply those two terms together and that gives us a final result of 12.18 at an angle of 6.4 degrees. And that is our second voltage in this question. So again I hope you found this video useful for a slightly more complicated uh, series RLC circuit. In our next video we're going to look at the concept of series resonance and what that involves.